So let's do a silent voice. This is distributed by the same people who brought us Your Name. It's a, a, a Japanese anime. If you remember with Your Name, it was a similar thing. that They opened it on a Thursday, and so there was one big screening, and then it, it kind of it then was distributed in place after place during the next few weeks. So you'll, you may have to seek this out, but many of you, I think, will have seen it already from the, from the early screening. So silent voice, or as it's translated on screen at both the beginning and the end of the film, The Shape of Voice. Um, it's, I thought it was a really interesting anime. It deals with themes of bullying, ostracization, suicide, self-harm, hearing impairment. I mean, it's a film dealing with serious issues. So Shoya is a popular school kid who bullies a um, hearing impaired girl and later on regrets his behavior, finds himself shut out of the older friendship group, something which is represented on screen by characters having X's literally drawn on their faces so he can't, you know, he can't see their faces. And he says, I want to restore what I've destroyed. He attempts to put back together the world, the sort of childhood world with, in which he was a bully, to apologise and to make things right. And it is a film about, on one level, apologising and make things right, but it's also apparent that his hostility towards uh, the girl was also a response to the fact that he was somehow drawn to her. You know, it's that thing about when you're in school playground, if you really like somebody, you hit them with your satchel. And it is, the film is kind of, is about that. Firstly, I thought the animation was really beautiful. It has that strange mix of hyper-real urban environments, pavements on which you think you could genuinely gra graze your knees, with this extraordinary verdant nature, bright, bright blossoms, bright flowers, you know, uh, waterfalls that you could, uh, you could drink from. The music is wonderfully soft and plaintive, but also weird and discordant, the sound of a piano which has been treated and distorted and occasionally moving backwards. And... What you get is something which is really, you know, I think dealing with the way in which people do or don't relate to each other. One of the, the tropes of the film is that it's about somebody who is no longer able to look the world in the eye, somebody who is no longer able to look at themselves in the eye. And so you constantly see characters, you don't see their faces, you don't see their heads, you see them from the neck downwards as if they're being gazed at by somebody who is looking down. So it's a story that ends up being told through hands, through arms, through knees, through feet. It's a story about accepting people and the way in which uh, teenagers and young people and adults as well can, you know, turn on and deceive each other and shut each other out of uh, circumstances. I thought it was really sort of I thought it was a, a, a film with genuine depth that I want to go and watch again. Obviously, in my head, I, I was all the time comparing it with Your Name, which I think is a slightly higher watermark. I mean, Your Name, I thought, was really, really remarkable and genuinely breathtaking. But what Silent Voice or The Shape of Voice is, is a serious film about, you know, overcoming separation and grief and anxiety and hostility and dealing with some very, very serious subjects in a way which is very accessible and rather enchanting and magical and melancholic all at the same time.